All right, tell us about your book. Uh, where did this uh, idea come from? Well, the book is something which doesn't exist in the market at the moment. And if I explain what the book is and then the genesis for it, um, it will all become clear. The book is a simple exposition of English law as it applies to petroleum contracts. Petroleum contracts are anything that you find in the upstream, the midstream or the downstream. There are plenty of books on English law. You can buy some extremely thick and dry textbooks on English law on every aspect of English law. There are books on petroleum contracts and you can understand the mechanics of how every contract works. What there isn't, I don't think, is a book which simply says, let's look at the key factors of English law and how they apply to petroleum contracts. It's not a book on UK petroleum law. There are plenty of books out there that analyze in detail the law and the regulation of the UK. So it is simply an explanation for people having to apply English law to oil and gas project contracts. The genesis of this book um, is a dear friend of mine, Dr. Edward Pereira, a Brazilian lawyer who I had the pleasure of sharing an office with for several months. And he was working with me on contracts governed by English law. And what became apparent talking to him is that English law is increasingly being selected as the governing law for contracts where neither the contract nor the project it relates to nor the contracting parties have any particular nexus to England and Wales, and yet they still select English law. And Dr. Pereira would say to me, what does English law say about this? And he would ask that question in relation to all manner of devices that you find in contracts, termination clauses, liquidated damages, force majeure, conditions precedent, and so on. And I promised him that one day I would write him a book which simply answered all of those questions in one place. What's the unique aspect of English law? I mean. If you look at uh, the dominance in the industry, it's been by American companies. So why bother with English law as opposed to the law of the state of Texas or, for that matter, the Ukraine or any other jurisdiction? Well, it's, it's very topical that we discuss that today in Oxford, which is a very old seat of learning. English law is very, very old. It has a, a, a history and a pedigree which is unmatched by any other form of jurisprudence. We have published decisions, we have a lot of jurisprudence and complexity in relation to how English law is developed and the way it applies in particular to petroleum contracts which we can draw on. Uh, English law is w widely regarded as the, the ideal choice of a neutral governing law for a particular contract. People respect the outcomes that English law has. It's, it's predictable and it can be something which delivers certainty of outcome, particularly where they have disputes in relation to their contract. Now getting to disputes, uh, as you well know, uh, the forum used in uh, large international oil and gas contracts are not the courts, uh, certainly not the courts of England in many cases, but rather it's uh, an arbitration forum. So what's the relevance of this book dealing with English law to many disputes trying to interpret contracts that are governed by English law. You still have to understand, whatever your method of dispute resolution is, what English law will say and how it will interpret the nuances of your particular contract. The great joys of English law is the freedom of contract. You can write anything you like in an English contract, English law contract. You're also free to breach that contract if you so wish, subject only to paying the penalties which the contract prescribes for doing so. So the, the book is intended to be a guide to people who have done nothing with English law beyond apply it to their contracts who really do need to understand when they say English law governs my contract, what they are committing to in doing so. Now, how does uh, your book and the interpretation of English law with regards to petroleum contracts fit into the industry practices? Because in a way, uh, how the oil and gas business goes about doing its business impacts how these contracts are interpreted, not just what an English judge might say. Now, that's absolutely right. And one of the things which is interesting is a symbiosis which becomes apparent between English law and the law of petroleum contracts, if you like, the unwritten law of petroleum contracts. The Lex Petrolia. The Lex Petrolia, we can call it that. Is there a Lex Petrolia? I think there is. And how does it relate to English law? Well, I, I think there is a Lex Petrolia. There's a way that things get done. If we take a simple example, English law, when it comes to define reasonable endeavours, has a very sophisticated body of jurisprudence. It's evolved very recently over the last couple of years to define what is reasonable in certain commercial circumstances, what is not. We get into our petroleum contracts, we talk about reasonable and prudent operation, and we have to make those two fit together. So it's necessary to apply English law, the black letter English law, to the practical reality of living petroleum contracts.